I, one of the things that is, tends to recur in some of the interviews that we've done is the uh, notion of the relationship between psychology and women's studies and how generally, and now I am speaking generally, save for the involvement of a few key women psychologists, feminist psychologists, women's studies and psychology haven't really um, meshed yeah. very well. Um, so I wonder, maybe you could talk a little bit about yeah. that in general now, not just... just yeah, not yeah, life, in general. But, yeah, because um, yeah, I can't remember you know, I was just a lowly graduate student, mm -hmm. so I can't remember what was happening, the particulars yeah. happening at, at Carleton. Um, at Wesleyan, that, um, there were several of us in the psych department that were involved with issues about women and gender mm -hmm. um, in various different degrees of, of involvement. Um, so it was okay, even though many of my uh, Colleagues in psychology thought it was just a fad, say for oh, women. You know, yeah. 27 years later, yeah. we still like have can't we could fill 10 classes, right? Yeah. It's sort of, yeah. the fad has lasted that long. Yeah. Um, but um, so so Wesley had a number of people in the social sciences uh, that were interested in women's studies. So our women's studies department um, was actually fairly our program. It was in the department. Mm -hmm. um, it was fairly balanced, and okay. I say that there were, of course, in the natural sciences there was nothing, and, and actually in the performing arts there was very little, but uh, the rest of the humanities and the social sciences had good, a kind of healthy balance of participation. Mm -hmm. In other institutions that was apparently quite uncommon, you know, for talking mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. women at various women's studies conferences, that um, psychologists didn't participate. You know, there are yeah. exceptions, but mm -hmm. they weren't big players in women's mm -hmm. studies, and that yeah. that history and English literature and mm -hmm. um, maybe government and sociology tended to be more right. more present. Do you have any sense of why? Well, I think for the the, the really uh, empiricist, experimentally trained people, it's a it's a big jump to take. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a, I mean, you'd think it is because you and you and I kind of <laughs> agree on some yeah, of these things, yeah. but I think, um, especially with the rise of cognitive psychology, where one's gender, race, social class don't really matter, mm -hmm. because what we're looking at is mm -hmm. cognitive processes which are purportedly transcend class, race, and gender. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, a lot of the women entering into psychology in the 80s were entering into this world um, in which the only place that gender really played a part was in the sub, was in, in social psych and maybe right. a little bit in developmental, mm -hmm. um, and even they were becoming you know, imbued and influenced by thinking about cognitive models mm -hmm. and you know backgrounding gender. So that's one reason I think it is, mm -hmm. um, and the other reason that is psychologists become increasingly narrowly trained as. as many scientists are, um, a lot of, even though there's an inclination to be feminist in one's politics, mm -hmm. um, there's not an intellectual base mm -hmm. to sort of make that work in your science. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.